So, welcome to ICA's monthly news chat, a short discussion with an expert. One of the ways that ICA aims to keep you in the know. Today's discussion is with Janet Adams. So we're gonna have a bit of a tech twist today because Janet is a expert in AI. Janet, welcome. Really good to see Thank you. Thank so, you for having me. Oh, so it's been an eventful month with heaps for us to discuss, but one of those subjects um, is flexible working, um, particularly as people are starting to plan for the end of the pandemic. Yet there seems to be different views. I noticed the CEO of Goldman Sachs was actually describing work from home as an aberration. Um, what, what are you seeing on your side? Well, reading uh, research and articles on working from home, you know, people are really liking it. And I think um, we're going to see a lot more gravitation towards flexible working after lockdown. So, for example, a survey of 2000 randomly selected workers found that 49 percent would try to change jobs after the pandemic if they couldn't work in their preferred location. Now, Goldman Sachs might not suffer uh, with talent retention, but I imagine a lot of organizations are really going to have to stop and listen to, to their their stuff because if you think about it suddenly the market has exploded because you no longer have to live near where you work. McKinsey also reviewed how extensively remote work might persist after the pandemic and they looked at more than 2,000 tasks in 800 occupations across eight markets covering about 62 percent of GDP and what they found was that only remote work that can be done without, considering only remote work that can be done without a lot of productivity, 20 to 25% of the workforces in advanced economies could work from home between three and five times, three and five days a week. This is four to five times more remote work than before the pandemic. And huge numbers of executives are planning to reduce office space. So I think work from home is here to stay, but most likely in a blended work fashion with some time in the office, some time out with people, some time at home. Yeah, I, I can see the secret is to come up with a model that's sustainable, as you say. Yeah. So another subject, which again is very, very topical, is diversity and inclusion. Now, uh, with this sort of ever, ever increasing automation, um, is, there a, is there something we need to be sort of keeping in mind there on the technology side? Is there a connection between the two? That's a really, really good point, Mark, and a subject very, very close to my own heart. So, of course, COVID-19 did drive uh, increases in AI and automation across a number of sectors, and particularly sectors where, where customers work close with, with, um, with workers or where workers work close to their jobs. And so uh, companies deployed automation in places like warehouses, grocery stores, call centers, manufacturing uh, plants. And what we've also seen is that women's jobs were more prone to job losses during COVID-19 than men's. And also because women are paid less than men generally across the globe, that's just a known fact, they're more likely to be in these lower paid jobs that get automated out. So it's been a tough COVID-19 for women who, who, who are economically more prone to economic shocks as well. And various surveys are predicting that we have a lot of work to do to ensure that we come out of COVID-19 with women progressing forwards and the gender pay gap uh, reducing. Thanks, Janet. So the other one at this point, um, I sort of entitled this the one that got away. And this is where the, there's a, perhaps a news item of interest to our community that didn't really get the press coverage. Uh, what did you pick up for this month? So the one that nearly got away this month was uh, the FinCEN um, consultation on blockchain compliance tools. Uh, FinCEN actually announced it in December, but uh, throughout January and February, they've been extending the, the consultation period and, and allowing for comments. And FinCEN are proposing record keeping and reporting requirements for blockchain. So mm -hmm. compliance people everywhere need to be aware of this one. The proposed regulations could present 
significant compliance requirements for banks and money services businesses that engage in cryptocurrency transactions with unhosted wallets or wallets held in jurisdictions specified by FinCEN. Over $10,000 um, threshold. So a lot of work to be done here, I think, particularly with seeing the explosive growth in, in cryptocurrencies and decentralized finance that 2021 has brought. So this is really interesting. So this is where the regulators are actually attempting to regulate now. And so the compliance community really do need to be um, keeping in touch with these developments such as this one. Well, absolutely. We also had a talk last week on Monday from Hester Pierce, SEC commissioner, where she was calling for both legal clarity and the freedom to experiment for uh, decentralized finance providers so that DeFi can compete with CeFi, which is centralized finance, to offer investors financial services. She was very uh, positive about the the benefits that decentralized finance can bring. She talked about how their promises of democratization open access, transparency, predictability, and systemic resilience are alluring. So I, we're seeing a, a big growth both in, in provision of decentralized finance, but in regulatory interests and emerging regulation across the globe. So it's a very hot topic for us to watch through 2021. Very good. So of course, we cannot finish without talking about crypto. So just out of interest, Janet, how big is the market? Huge market. It's <laughs> huge. Uh, so, so the size of cryptocurrency market is just growing so fast, right? It's it hit 1.5 as of today. It's 1.5 trillion dollars. Now, if you think about the growth, that is up from beginning of 2020. It was 190 billion. So it's grown from 190 billion to 1.5 trillion in a little over 12 months. And just in 2021, it was 570 billion at the end of 2020. So we've nearly tripled in the last two months. That's and if incredible. you think about that, it's incredible, isn't it? If you think about yeah. that, uh, the Binance CEO, so three major cryptocurrency exchanges are Binance, KuCoin and Coinbase. But the Binance CEO estimated 300,000 new users per day on a sustained basis opening Binance accounts. Now, you've got to actually admire these, these yeah. uh, companies, right? Because from a operational resilience perspective, that's just such an enormous influx of volume. And they have had some issues over the last week or two. They've had to suspend deposits. They've had to, dis to suspend withdrawals, but they're coping very well. And it's now an estimated 68 million people, which is give or take 1% or approaching 1% of the world's population now hold a cryptocurrency. Gosh, so there's no turning back, at least there's no turning back to zero. We know crypto, crypto yeah. is highly volatile. So there's, there's not really a day now where crypto is not in the news. Is there anything in particular that you've noted over the last month? Oh, gosh, <laughs> where do I start? Loads of amazing crypto news. I'll, I'll, I'll start just on Saturday where JP Morgan um, announced that they're advising its clients to invest 1% of their portfolio in Bitcoin. Now, that that's a big, big uh, change of heart for JP Morgan, of course. Uh, there was a hundred million dollar purchase of of uh, Bitcoin by ba Mass Mutual recently. Tesla's one point five billion dollars. Nobody's going to forget in a hurry. And the CEO of Standard Chartered Bank recently said that widespread cryptocurrency adoption is absolutely inevitable so so really big uh, strong words from him other banks standard charter bank bbva dbs bank of new york mellon all announcing support for cryptocurrencies or investments by cryptocurrencies and the big investors blackrock capital announced yeah. they didn't say how much but they have cryptocurrency they, they have a bitcoin investment and what's also really interesting recently i found particularly interesting is that it's we're starting to see what are called altcoins attracting investment. So Bitcoin's the big one. Then after that, you have alternative coins, if you like, altcoins. And a Dubai fund, a Dubai investment fund, FD7 Ventures, last week announced that they're going to offload Bitcoins worth $750 million and use the proceeds to increase positions in Cardano and Polkadot tokens. So Cardano and Polkadot are both in the top 10 cryptocurrencies by, by, um, by market cap. And it's interesting to see big investors already looking to switch 
from the big daddy Bitcoin into the the up and coming rising old coins beneath. So very, very exciting times in crypto. And another one I sort of remember, was it Elon Musk has been pretty active? Yes, Elon Musk, $1.5 billion um, of Tesla money invested and and his own personal crypto seems to be Dogecoin. So whenever whenever Elon tweets Doji, now Doji was started as a joke, it's now some form of payments uh, token, but um, Elon seems to have adopted it. And wh whenever Elon tweets Doji, the price of Doji goes up, you know, 5x in a day uh, yeah. as part of this meme culture, pump and dump culture. And it's actually quite damaging for a lot of people because if you get that FOMO on the rising, when you see the green candles and the price is rising, a lot of people will, will FOMO in mm. and then lose their money when it crashes back down again after the pump and dump. So um, so Elon's having fun there with Doji. Uh, yeah. there's, there's no question. And so what about scams? Well, this is this is close to 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 my heart, uh, Mark. So so cryptocurrencies, it's it's I see so much fear in the cryptocurrency um, from people outside of crypto, but also in crypto of things like scams and, and hackers. And I, I fell victim to what we think we don't even know what it was, but we think we being me and various other randoms on the Internet think is a an exit crack, an exit scam from a Russian exchange. So I had some cryptocurrencies which I bought and, and held on a Russian exchange called Livecoin and I'd had them for three years and they had done fabulously well. They were a DeFi crypto from a Swiss regulated um, company called Swissborg. They'd done fabulously well and on Christmas Eve, the exchange simply shut down with $300 million of cryptocurrency in it. There was no communication, there was no police, there was no regulator, there has been nothing. And nobody knows, they, they said that they were hacked, but nobody knows where they hacked, was it, did, was it an exit scam? And th this is the really dark side of cryptocurrency because there was no one there to help me, literally nobody. I tried reaching out to one of these firms who 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 investigate crypto um, crime, but they say it was just going to be so expensive to retain them. It wasn't worth it. So after about six weeks of negotiating with what also appear to be other scams pretending they could get you your money back. I eventually wrote it off and, and moved on about about two weeks ago. But there's a lot of scamming. There's a lot of fear. Um, obviously, hacking is a really big thing. And without regulation, this is where we really need the regulation in cryptocurrency to make it safer and also make it easier to use as well, because it's still kind of out of the reach of of most kind of your average user, both from the complexity of the trading instruments that we're using, but also the technology is quite hard to get your head around. Interesting. So, Janet, it's clear that crypto is not going to go away and there are quite a few people out there are thinking, oh my goodness, I know so little about this. Have you got sort of one tip before we sort of wrap up? Well, um, my one tip, my one one suggestion is that I for me I believe that everybody who works in banking finance of of any kind should know at least a little bit about cryptocurrency educate yourself go to Coursera go to um you know MIT have an have an online course but really you can't beat hands-on experience and so I would say this is not investment advice you can reiterate that Mike <laughs> I would suggest everybody should open a, a cryptocurrency account and buy ten dollars I'm not saying spend your money I'm not like JP Morgan saying put a one percent of your, your assets in this isn't about financial this is about education for compliance officers open an account take that little step and then see what's going on and, and learn about it well, that's a good tip. So at the end of the day, buy crypto for education purposes. And Mark, could I mention, could I mention my favourite news item of the month before we go? Mm -hmm. go not on. really tech, not really tech, but it's a diversity, uh, the diversity point, which is that um, it was recently announced by its owners that Mr. Potato Head is being rebranded as 
potato head. And this is a beautiful move to ensure that we're not gender stereotyping toys and that we're being really inclusive as a society to, to, to as many people and as many children as possible. And again, I think this has a very important message for compliance risk legal professionals, which is we need to always make sure that we're being inclusive to as many people as possible. Thanks, Janet. Well, that's a good Thank way you, to finish this month's news chats with Mr. Potato Head. Until next month. Thanks very <laughs> potato much. Potato Head. Potato Head. <laughs> right head. Until next month. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Bye.